But starting us off, a singer-songwriter who's just released his brand new album, which is called My World. Have a listen to this. Here's Adam Grant. Got a question running through my head Should I go to the bar? Should I just stay home instead? Stayed out three times last week Yeah, my girlfriend still hasn't fully forgiven me There's Jimmy with his hands on his knees Got a half pint of Guinness And he couldn't look more happy Look, there comes Mary the boss. I still owe her a score from the tab she loaned to me. To me, to me, to me, yeah. This is my crowd. These are my people. This is our home while the weak and slowly disappears. So who am I fooling? Where else would I rather be? This is the life going out tonight. Gary's in the corner taking gear again Yeah, he says it's not a problem But those pedals are his only friends They describe and make up everywhere Yeah, sometimes I wonder Will this madness ever end? Look, here comes Brian Moore Yeah, he thinks he's bloody hard Cause he got a job working the door This is flawed, yet how much is true But I'm glad I get to waste my time in here with you With you, with you, with you These are my people, this is our home, while the week of slowly disappears. So who am I fooling, where else would I rather be? This is the life going on! So there we go, a great song called My Crowd, one of the new songs from Adam Grant from his new album My World, which is out now, and the man himself joins us in the studio. Adam, how are you, sir? Hello, Robin, thank you. I'm keeping great, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Tell us about the song My Crowd, Now I believe that's a big favourite of Terry Hooley's. It was, it was a, um, it's one of the most recent songs on that album, uh, so recent, in fact, that um, it wasn't originally on it. Right. Um, that album started off as a six-track EP, and then um, I did this uh, talent competition thing in the Ghost Toe in Bangor, and Terry Hooley was a judge at it. And each week I got through like, to the qualifying heat, and then to the semi final, and then to the final. And I'm quite proud of that because I was the only singer songwriter in the final against right. six bands. Right. <laughs> so I was, that's maybe Shannon Glory. But um, <laughs> no, Terry, uh, he, he really liked that particular song. And uh, each week I tried to do something different, you know, obviously to keep the judges' attention. They didn't want any repetitiveness playing the same song. So I had this song in the pipeline and I was like, right, I'll get this finished and I'll, I'll play it next week. So I, pl I played it on the semi-final and then I got asked to play it again in the final. Um, so it's just a song, uh, it's just a song about general 
um, camaraderie and the general buzz and crack at your at your local. <laughs> <laughs> and it's slightly different on the album, isn't it? It's on, more punky, the, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's got a full band sound on the album, the drums and electric guitars and bass and a bit more of like a pop punky kind of vibe to it. But like uh, that particular song, uh, Terry actually uh, wavered his fee um, from being a judge at that Ghost Tour competition to send me to Melbank Studios in uh, Lisbon to record it and another song. So I, I took the EP from six songs to eight songs, which I thought was a bit random. So we went back to the studio and recorded two more, and that's how I've ended up with a 10-track album. Okay, so the album is called My World. I'm fascinated by the photograph on, on the front of the album here. Tell us all about that. That's my dad um, in the early 60s, um, an old school photograph. Um, my mom, my mom and dad both passed away, and uh, so we've released this album. There's a song on it called Your Love, um, which is kind of like my tribute to them. It's a song that's kind of a, like, you know, a yin and a yang. Like, I don't really enjoy playing it, because mm -hmm. it's that personal. It's the most personal song I've ever wrote. And, yeah. um, but it's one of those ones that I'll play it now and again, and if maybe someone comes up to me afterwards and say, you know, my mom's just passed away from cancer or something like that, and that, that song kind of hit me, then mm -hmm. that's the kind of wee thing that spurs you on to, the soldier on with yes, the song, yeah. so I thought to myself, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record this professionally so that it's always there, it's always set in stone, and it's just my wee tribute to mum and, mum and, mum and dad. So when it came to uh, making the album cover, um, I was working with a graphic designer, and he says, right, send me a lot of uh, photographs, family photographs, photos of you playing live, interests, and so on, and he came back with that photograph of my dad, and he thought, it's like, oh, this is kind of... Reminds me of you, it's kind of uh, very Smithsy and yeah. 80s kind of indie rock. And he says, it's not you, is it? I'm like, no, no, it's not me, I'm not that old. <laughs> but um, so it came from that there, and then he put that kind of nice uh, style on it, the, the effect on it. And then he says, well, why don't we find something similar for my mum for the back? So the photograph on the back is my mum at the Bangor Pier in 1968. And then give me plenty of room then to put the track list and all the legal details and so on. But that's just maybe maybe tribute to mum and dad. Lovely. So it's, it's always there. So how long did it take to kind of get the whole thing together? Because you've had an EP out before, haven't you? I've had an acoustic, you know, like solo EP out about two years ago. It was mm -hmm. called The Fight. Um, so then ever since then, like that, it, was, it was basically just acoustic singer songwriter kind of stuff. But that's how I started, you know. Yeah. Um, when I was in my teens, I was in punk bands and so on. and. Um, a couple did reasonably well. I was in a band called Sucker Punch and we, uh, we played over in Nottingham Rock City and a few festivals in England and local support here, you know, the Limelight and the Mandela. And then just life got in the way and people yeah. went to uni and, you know, I became a dad myself and so on and kind of bummed about the house for a couple of years. And yeah. Just picked up the acoustic at home, started writing again, and eventually got to the point that my wife kicked me out of the house. Says, "Right, <laughs> could you get out and go do some open mics or something? Could you do my head in?" So that's basically how I got back into it again, and just gradually over time, you know, progressed that kind of that loop pedal into my sound, and then just started writing again and released that EP, and it's just moved forward from there. So. And do you prefer the singer-songwriter stuff, or would you rather have your your own band on stage with you the whole time? Well, it's it's at that stage now where um, for my album launch, um, I'm playing with a backing band. And I'm, I'm absolutely loving it, you know, yeah. rehearsing with those guys and just the, the extra sound that they bring to the songs is fantastic. So I'm a bit 50-50 about the future. I'll, I'll always still do my own thing, but if any, you know, any big gigs and all come along along the way, then I'm definitely, I'll definitely get the band back together and play, play with them. But as for being a solo act, I still, I like, I like the fact that it's, it's, a, it's my songs and it's, it's my arrangements and so on. I don't have to arrange, uh, right, you guys be here for this time and you learn this bit and you learn that bit. And towards the end of my time in, in, in bands, it got to that stage where I was getting a wee bit fed up about telling yeah. people what to do. And I've always been a songwriter first and foremost. I've always, I've always liked writing stories and all my songs can be quite observational and about, about life and songs that are relatable. And so I've always been a songwriter. Do you remember the first song you ever wrote? I do. Um, it, it was a song called Jump, right. <laughs> Jump, and it was just, it was like a, it was very early stages of that punk band, Sucker Punch, and it was basically about jumping in a mosh pit. <laughs> 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 it was the very first song I ever wrote, <laughs> but it was, a, it was a bouncy one and everybody did jump, so it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, did you come from a musical family? Not so much a musical performing family, but a musical, you know, appreciative mm -hmm. family. Um, my dad, uh, my dad had such a crazy appreciation for all different types of music, so much. Like, I mean, um, before he passed away, he was massively into El Devo. 
Right, it's okay. And uh, you know, it's not my cup of tea, but yeah. when you listen to those guys and listen to the tenors and you mm -hmm. know, listen to them singing, they're fantastic. But I, I've got to thank my dad because uh, he introduced me to Oasis. Not so much that he liked Oasis, it was the fact that he didn't like them that much. I right. thought the Gallagher brothers, you know, were headers. Yeah. That that got me interested enough to go to Woolworths and buy uh, definitely maybe on cassette <laughs> <laughs> with my with my auntie and uncle on a Saturday. What's this band? Is no naughty words or anything on that? Like no, 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 it's not. <laughs> my dad found it and he, he flipped out like. But <laughs> we things they got. And um, one of the first things that made me want to be in a band was uh, you ever heard of a band called the Mavericks? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah. My mom and dad they were massive fans of them and they took me to the waterfront to see them. And their lead singer, he's called Raul Lamalo, mm -hmm. and uh, he just had this massive rack of guitars against the side wall. And every single song, he would have changed his guitar. Every song, I just remember sitting to myself, "Well, this guy's class." <laughs> and I think it was that I was about fourteen, and that Christmas I got my first guitar for Christmas, and wow. it just kind of went from there. And if you got that guitar obsession now, do you keep buying guitars? Or? I've got a few. Yeah, I've got, I would like a few more, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, my wife's made me downsize a bit, like you know, but. <laughs> You never know, maybe if I sell a million albums and get a bigger house and buy more guitars. Exactly. <laughs> so what's the kind of long-term plans now? The album's out, but what's kind of next for you? Long-term plans, um, I've been very lucky. I've been kind of continually working with Terry. I, like, I'm you know, uh, really appreciative of it. It hasn't just been like a, a whim mm -hmm. type thing. You know, he's he managed, he's been working together a bit. He got me on Radio Walster and a few bits and bobs. And so hopefully I'm going to continue that relationship with Terry. He's going to try to get me on a few summer festivals and so on. I'm really just going to try and plug the album as much as I can. Brilliant. Yeah. And like I said, if, if um, decent gigs come along, I'll definitely keep performing with the, with the background band too. Yeah, okay. Tell us about the next song you're going to do for us. The next song? Um, the next song I'm going to do is called Closed Doors. Okay. It's a song, uh, it's, it's a song, it's, it's, I, I live in Cumber, and, and uh, the land of potatoes. <laughs> um, no, there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's sort of like a wee, I pay homage to Cumber in a certain way, and it's kind of about it's about um, chasing a relationship and basically not closing the door on that relationship. But if anybody's from Cumber, they'll recognise the, the couple of wee references that are in there, like the Enla River and High Street. And if you're from Cumber, you'll get it. Great. But it's about not closing the door in a relationship, basically fighting for it, trying to keep it alive. Well, Adam, thank you for joining us today, and uh, the very best of luck with the album. It's called My World, and it's out right now. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Take a walk down by the Endler River to address the thoughts in my head. I soon discover the day has turned to slumber, the sun has turned from yellow to red. I started thinking, reminiscing, thinking about the love we had was so sweet. I kicked the dirt, tried to escape the hurt, but I can't wait to see you again. But I won't close that door Even though you won't see me no more No, I won't close that door On you No, I won't close that door Even though you won't see me no more No, I won't close that door On you Stuck in traffic, five o'clock in Bridge Street, trying to make my way home to you. The road is closed, the truck has lost its load, but that won't stop me from getting through. I'm sitting, waiting, reminiscing, thinking about the love we had was so sweet. The road is clear, I'm finally out of here, and I floor it over high. But I won't close that door Even though you won't see me no more No, I won't close that door On you No, I won't close that door Even though you won't see me no more No, I won't close that door